The return to work program is basically take your injured worker, keep them working, minimize time lost, minimize overall costs to the employer. Establish a, a return to work program proactively, waiting for that injured worker to happen or ha waiting for that injury to happen with that worker versus waiting for that injured worker to walk in their office and say, I'm injured. So what they want to do is, it, is it's just a plan, it's a program that they need to complete. Uh, paperwork's involved, but basically it's a letter to the doctor with a job description of some sort of lighter position asking the doctor as you examine this injured worker for us, can you give us an opinion if they can come back to work and at what capacity? So let's, let's, start, with a, let's start with a conversation to the, or a, a call to the employer. They don't have a return to work program at all. They're interested, they wanna get something started. So I say to them, so let's go with a bar. We'll pick a bar, any bar that you want to. And they have a bartender. Bartender has a reaching injury for the shoulder for reaching um, upper shelf liquor. So what does a bartender do with one arm? You can't. What do you do with somebody with only one arm? That's a question they want answered. What about an ID card checker? ID card checker sits at the front desk, only needs one arm to check an ID, and either you're 18 or not, or 21 or not, or whatever the age limit is for that particular bar or restaurant or whatever you need. Now you have someone that's gonna come back to work, no time lost dollars or very minimal time lost dollars. And that's where it all starts. It starts with that conversation, thinking about what you wanna do with that person. It's getting past all the frustration. I really don't think this claim, you wanna talk about claims? And say, you know, they might say, I don't think this claim's valid. The department may allow it anyways. You gotta get past all the frustration and say, how do I fix what's going on how do I get my person back to work? Psychologically, or, or you know, the, the whole process of working, you know, if someone's off too long, um, studies have shown the longer that you're off work, the, let, the harder it is to return you to work. Um, what does it do for the, for the injured worker? Well, if they come back to work and they're gonna, gonna get, keep getting paid, um, I mean, and that's, money makes the world go around. The reason that you wanna bring them back to work is it's, it's financial. The bottom line, it's financial, it's dollars. It's also injured workers that stay home tend to stay home. Injured workers that you bring back to work quickly tend to stay at work. So, for, so and it's a dollar. So let's start with the dollars. The first thing is a time lost dollar is not just a dollar. It's, it's, a, it's a cost that gets multiplied over and over the longer the claim lasts. So the $1 or the $11 that you're concerned about that person sitting with an ID card checker is now going to be up to $150 as I sit home, and I hate to say this, watching Dr. Oz. They're enjoying themselves. They're getting a they're getting a check uh, that's tax free. Why go to work? Why would they go to work? Why would when I say, "Hey, employee who's injured, you're going to be an ID checker now," and what if they say, "You hired me to be a bartender, not an ID checker. Forget it." They can. That's their right. That's a right an injured worker has. The employer also has a right to bring an injured worker back to any employment that they say, see fit that has val validity to the company. Checking IDs at a bar, it, it's a valid requirement. So if the injured worker says, I'm not going to do it, then they can't collect time loss from the department. There's what they call the SAW program. It's the stay at work program uh, known as SAW, S-A-W. If you bring an injured worker back to work for the first 66 days, you can sub, uh, support or submit paperwork and you can receive up to 50% of those wages back in your pocket. Hey, you know, if they don't come back to work after you offer that job to them, they can't get time lost. Didn't know that. Um, did you know you didn't have to bring them back if they're making $32 an hour? You can bring them back at 11. Didn't know that. Did you know if they work night crew, but now you want them to work day crew? You can do that. Didn't know that. So it's a lot of this deer in the headlights that, wow, I have these rights that I never knew about. It, with Department of Labor and Industry, their, their whole catch on this is return someone back to work as fast as possible. However, they also have a program that says if someone's injured, they're due some sort of compensation. So it's a give and take. They're, they're, the payment's there for someone who's injured 
and remember, an injury doesn't have to be witnessed, it just has to be reported. If it meets the, the, the policies and the standards and the laws, they're going to allow the claim. So I'm sitting in a back warehouse and I drop a pallet on my toe and no one's there to hear it. All I have to do is report that it happened. If possible, the first thing is get a statement from the injured worker and any witnesses. More times than not, if a claim is going to have any red flags, you'll see the statement change over time. From, I fell and hit my knee, the second statement is, I fell and hit my knee and then my elbow. And then the statement to the doctor is, well, I fell, I hit my knee and elbow, and then I fell back and hit the back of my head and as I was unconscious. So it's really important, these statements are, are brutally important as far as trying to figure out should the claim be allowed or not. Uh, it's communication with a supervisor. What does a supervisor do with that person? Get them to the doctor immediately. If someone doesn't want to come back, I've seen some injured workers where the day after, the hour they got out of the doctor's office, they came back in the, into the restaurant and said, I'm ready to go back to work. What can I do? Now, what about the same person or the same type of injury? They go to the doctor and you don't hear from them for three days. And now you're chasing them down. I think that says that speaks volumes of the kind of worker you have and what kind of injured return to work issues you're going to have. It's <clears throat> I'm a bit jaded. I've done this for a long time. You can read the writing on the walls on on claims sometimes. If you ever have a feeling that you don't feel that, or that you think that the claim may not be valid, say so. But remember because Joe's been working for you for 25 years and he files a claim and he's been the best employee in the world doesn't mean it might not be valid. That's the catch. You, you have to know, you have to take time and, and, and take a look at it. I've had employers that say, leave the injured worker alone, let them get their benefits, they've worked for me for 25 years, they're the greatest person in the world, um, but there's nothing in the file medically that would suggest they shouldn't be working. I can give you an example right now of a gentleman who has an injured worker who has kept that person on salary for two years at approximately $4,000 a month while they sit in their house and supposedly work part-time in their job of injury, but the claim has gone on and on and on, and now we're up into you know, $84,000 worth of medical on a fracture that happened two years ago. I think, that, I think the issue is getting an employer to understand that A, they have rights, and B, say to them, yes, I understand how frustrating this is, and yes, I understand that this process isn't working for you, but you can still come out on top. And they have to be willing to act. Sometimes they might have to eat a little crow. They might have brought them back light duty before and didn't like what they were doing and fired them inappropriately, meaning, what I mean inappropriately, following the LNI labor and industry guidelines. And so they might have to say, I'm going to ask you to rehire them. I'm going to ask you to bring them back. And you're not going to like it, but you need to do this. Why do they need to do it? Stop time loss. Because if, if return to work is done appropriately with all the documentation, you have to remember, an injured worker can come to work and if everything's not done formally, can look at you and say, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to wipe off the menus today as part of my job, and I'm leaving. They go right back to the department, and they get paid time loss. Hey, Bob, uh, David on the, on the phone right now, and I just got a, uh, a referral from Betty. And hey, Bob, I'm, I want to help you with the return to work. Now, I understand that Jerry um, broke his wrist making pizzas yesterday. And so, so is he coming back to work, or what kind of plans do you have for him? Tell me uh, what are your plans to bring him back I to work. I don't know. He went, he went to the doctor, and I'm just waiting to hear back from him if he's okay. Did the doctor provide you an activity prescription form? Did, did Jerry get a, an activity prescription form to give to you to let you know what his restrictions are? Uh, it, it was my assistant manager was on the shift, and he, I, I honestly don't know. I just, you're calling me because someone in my organization is smart, but I really don't know. Well, let me, well, let's start it right from the beginning. So the answer is no to that. I don't have any paperwork from Jerry. Th and that's okay. So where's Jerry right now? 
at home. Okay. Can you get a hold of Jerry? Absolutely. Get a hold of Jerry. Tell him to go back to his doctor immediately and that you want an activity prescription form on your desk by tomorrow morning. Do I have to give him that form or nope. will the doctor have it? Doctor's already got it there. And the doctor gets paid for filling it out by the department. So the doctor is more than happy to fill it out for, for, uh, for Jerry and have uh, Jerry bring it back to you. So when he brings it back... I, I want you to call me immediately. Okay, flash the next day. Hey, he, ring, ring. He did bring it back, man. I've got this, but what, what does it mean for me? Well, what, is, what it's going to tell you is, can he work full duty? Can he work modified duty? Can he mod uh, work limited hours or he can't work at all? Well, it says he can work here, and I've got a list of like six things here, but it describes like what he can do with his arm. It doesn't really give me the job. That's no problem. Send me over a copy real quick. Okay, now you got that copy. Shoot, fax is over to me. So what we want to do is, I've got this activity prescription form that both of us are looking at. All right, and he's your pizza. He's your pizza man. He's right. he's. There's nobody like him. I'm dying right now because he's gone. Actually. Get somebody to fill a spot right now because if he can't whip a pizza up for you. You're dead in the water, and you need to take care of your business first. So hire, can I, do I have your permission to hire someone? You can hire anybody you want to because you've got a spot you need to fill, okay. and Jerry's not filling it right now. Correct. Okay, so, but we don't want Jerry to sit home because the doctor says he's got a wrist sprain. It's not broken, but he wants him to take it easy with that, that right sprain for a little while. Uh -huh. Hey, has he got any cashier experience? He was a cashier, actually, before we put him in the back of the house. You know what? Maybe we should bring him up to the front, and let's make him a cashier. What if he doesn't want to do that? It doesn't matter if he doesn't want to do it or not. Do you have, do you have some time? Absolutely. And can you bring him back full time doing some cashier work for you? Yes. Or maybe answering the telephone and taking orders? Yes. Perfect. So what I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to put together a job description. And it's going to be for front end cashier. I'm going to list everything that most cashiers do. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to make it bump it up against that activity prescription form and make sure that we're not overexerting the restrictions that he has. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to send it to you. Take a look at it. If you like what you see, there's a spot where you sign your name to it. Okay? Okay. Good. Perfect. Psst, shot it to you. I shot it back. I like it. Okay. Hey, I got you. Hey, I just got the job description today. It's got your name on it. I'm going to send it to Dr. Smith today. I'm going to ask Dr. Smith to sign off on it based on his APF. I don't think he's going to say no because you can't say no to restrictions that we're meeting. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, just got back. I just talked to the doctor. And Bob, I got a full release. So Jerry can come to work as a cashier and I'm good? Well, so far we're good. So what we would need to do now formally is we need to develop our formal return to work offer letter. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, what time you want him to start? What time you want to end? How much money he's going to make? Who's he going to report to? What address is he going to go to? Um, all this information. I just need you to answer the questions and I'm going to send you a copy of that, that release from the doctor so you have it for your files. Awesome. Cool. So I just shot it over to you, answer my questions. Yeah. Okay, you shot it back to me. I'm going to draft your formal return to work offer letter. I draft it, it meets the LNI criteria for, for the return to work. And I whip it all up for you. I'm going to take care of it for you because you're taking care of pay payroll and all these other things. So I, send it, I get it all done, I send it to you. Hey, Bob, do you like it? Looks fantastic, David. Any typos, anything that doesn't read right? No, everything looks good. Okay, so this is what I want you to do now. I want you to mail these documents formally to Jerry. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, if Jerry wants to come and pick them up, he can. But what's most important is you communicate the offer to him. Either he takes it out of your hand or he signs for it from the post office. So Jerry went on vacation for a couple of days, so we're going to mail it to him. So what I want you to do is I want you to send out two envelopes and a fax. And in that envelope, you're going to send a signed offer letter and the release from the doctor. You're going to send it to Jerry regular mail. You're going to send another envelope to Jerry certified registered mail that he has to sign for it. And then we're going to put a nice little packet and fax um, a packet off to the doctor so the doctor knows what we're doing. In that offer, Jerry has 10 days to make up his mind whether he wants that job or not. He's got, a, he's got a particular day and a time that he needs to show up and say to you, Bob, I'm here to take the job. Uh -huh. Or he doesn't show or doesn't call. In either case, on that day, time loss is going to stop. He's either accepted that return to work or he's declined it and time loss stops, depending on how you want to work the system. How, however he decides and exercises his rights after you have exercised your rights. But I've killed the time loss Done. issue. Hey!
I'm just calling to let you know, Jerry, it, he said yes, I've got a signed piece of paper saying it's good to go. Just making sure I do everything right. What do I do now? Perfect. Hey, send me a copy of that offer letter that he signed. Return it to me so I can send it to the department and let them know he showed up and we get time loss stopped. So they have a thing called, there's a, an option the employer has is kept see, keeping someone on salary. So you burn your thumb. Doctor says, I want you to take five days off for sanitary reasons. I don't want you to, I don't want you to, want you to be in the kitchen. Okay. So day one, day two, day three, an injured worker by law cannot collect time loss. On the fourth day, they start collecting time loss. And now the fifth day, now we have two days of time loss, and now they come back to work. The smartest thing an employer can do is just go back and pay them salary for the days they missed. Now you have a, now you have a, um, a time loss free claim and it's purely medical. Okay, don't know if Kim, I don't know if Kurt covered his part. If it's purely medical, another um, chocolate or sweet that you get as an employer is, if the medical doesn't exceed $2,700 total, when a claim cost, when the claim closes, they wipe out that $2,700. It's a $0 claim. Just because you paid $2 of time loss, or you paid five days of, um, of salary. You need to make sure that you have the physical restrictions from the doctor. You need to make sure that you have some sort of idea of what you want to have someone come back to do for you. You want to keep communication with the injured worker. Make them, make them come and bring you the documents that you need. It's, it's a right that you have, and it's a legality that the injured workers have to follow.